Can we hear it from you? Yeah. Sure. Well, Welcome. First, Thanks for being here. Yeah. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. I think it's first uh, important to start out with how was 2018. So we had in the United States 259 IPOs and 186 of them came to Nasdaq. So we're very pleased with the performance of 2018. And then if you look at the number of listing applications that we had on file starting last year, we have a 35 percent increase of Nasdaq companies, companies who want to come to Nasdaq at the start of this year. So you have a really great growing pipeline and a very very strong pipeline of companies from all industries, all sizes, looking to tap the public markets. And yes, the first month has been a challenge with the government being closed, but we continue to see um, really every company is looking just to tap the public markets as soon as they reopen. But everybody's whispering at the possibility that this government right. shutdown actually you is going to delay these things. So, I mean, there I certainly has been. I wonder if Adina. I certainly would say that there has been a delay so far. So, they, you know, we have a very important relationship with the SEC. They do real work to evaluate these companies, make sure the disclosures are accurate and complete. And then we do our work to evaluate them um, in accordance with the listing standards. And if they can't do their work, it's hard for us to complete but, ours. Yeah. However, I would say that um, with the hope that they, the government does reopen in the coming days, days weeks, yeah. then I think that we'll see that there is certainly less of a time window for these companies to go, but they're all ready to go. I mean, but they're getting Andrew, themselves ready. We heard from Rubenstein yesterday about that, hearing Please, some yeah. whisperings about it, but then you saw what the proposal from McConnell right. is going to be. There's competing... Well, that's, that's neither, why I, neither of which have look, 60 votes in the Senate. We all though, so. have to hope this is within days, but this could continue to stretch on for weeks. There's and no it, reason to think that, that either plan has 60 votes, I don't think. Which, no, then, no. which then begs the question, if this does extend out even several more weeks, at what point does this become a hockey stick in terms of a problem uh, for, the, for the economy, for your business, for the IPO market, for, for all the knock-on effects? Yeah, so I think the first thing I would say is, it, obviously, having a government shut down with all these people not working is just not good for them and not, and not good for the country. Um, but I also think that as you look at it, if it really does extend for weeks, then you're talking about more and more companies wanting to go public in a shorter and shorter window. But we still have almost the entire year. Right. And we are very excited because they are ready. They're readying themselves. They're putting themselves in motion so that when the window opens, they're, they'll be ready to go. Adina, I would think that the bigger issue for companies wanting to go private, assuming, or going public, assuming that you actually do see a, a solution to the government shutdown, would be the volatility we've seen in the markets in the fourth quarter. And then the the prospect of a global slowdown. I don't know. Maybe the slowdown makes companies want to get to market faster, but the volatility has got to be an issue. So going into the fourth quarter, it was that we had all these companies that were ready to go and wanted to tap the public markets, either in the first quarter, fourth quarter or very beginning of the year. And they did slow down some of those plans with the volatility in the market. But the companies that did go out did fine. And so if you're a strong company with a strong story and strong financials, you'll be able to get out even in a more volatile environment. I think that the volatility obviously has has calmed down a bit as we've gotten into 2019. And so there, it does feel like a receptive environment if we can get the companies to come into the I'm market. I'm curious whether the govern there's been any governance shift in terms of the companies that are planning to go public. You know, there was such a push for so long, dual class shares, uh, CEOs who had effectively total control. We sort of saw that trend and we've seen a little bit of a backlash against that trend. What do you see when in fact these two companies do go public? So the first thing I would say is the vast majority of the companies do not go public with a dual class structure. But there are a few companies that are founder led that look at this and say, I really want to make sure that I maintain a long term outlook for the company. I want to have that level of control in terms of me being able to execute on my long term plan. And I still think that they will come out with a dual class structure if they think that's right for them. And do you support that? We do support dual class, yes. I think that I look at it this way. We're very practical. So we would like more companies to tap the public markets. And we do believe it's good for the country, it's good for the economy to have more companies in the public markets. So if we look at the practicality of allowing these founder-led companies to come with dual class, it's better than them staying private and having um, investors not being able to invest in them at all. So our view is just a very pragmatic one.